hallelujah. We are grateful to the Lord for his greatness and his goodness. We, great, we are grateful for his love and his kindness. Hallelujah. Amen. Wherever you are, right where you are, whether you're in your room, in, your, in the living room, in your bedroom, you're wearing slippers, you're wearing church socks, whatever, you, whatever it is, wherever you are, just right now, just, just lift your hands and just give God the glory that's due his name. Hallelujah. Worship. There is no manual on worship, but it's you recognizing how worthy he is, how worthy he is of your glory, how worthy he is of your honor, how worthy he is. Hallelujah. He's given us everything. Hallelujah. The, the word of God says that pertains to life and godliness. Hallelujah. And he's just worthy of our praise. He's just worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's just worthy. Hallelujah. Worthy, worthy, worthy. Hallelujah. Doesn't take a whole group, a whole room full of people to worship him. Hallelujah. Ah, God, you can worship him right where you are. It's You say, God, you're, you're worthy of this. You're worthy of my lifted hands. You're worthy. Hallelujah. You're worthy of my voice. Ha, ah, God, I thank you. You're worthy. Ha, ah, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Forgive me, God, if I put more weight and put more worth in other things than you. But in this moment, in this moment, I, I press the reset button and I, I establish you. I deem you to be worthy. Hallelujah. Worthy of my attention. Worthy. Worthy of my praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Worthy, worthy, worthy. Worthy is the King of glory. Worthy is the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father, and we give your name the glory. We thank you, O oh God, and we give your name the praise. Thank you, Father God. Never let us get satisfied with the mediocre. Ne never let us get satisfied with the commonplace. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We thank you, God. We never want to lump you into our regular routine, God. We, but we want it to be an experience. We want it to be a privilege. The, the psalmist says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. We thank you. We thank you, God. Thank you, God. As my grandmother would say, you allowed, you allowed our, our golden moments to roll on just a little longer, Lord. We thank you for life today. We thank you for strength today. We thank you for health today. In the name of Jesus. Father God, I thank you, Lord God, for just restoring right now. You're the restorer. Hallelujah. Of missing and broken things. I pray restoration of joy. I pray restoration of peace. I pray restoration of hope, Lord God. In the name of Jesus. To those, Lord God, who have been at a deficit of those things. In the name of Jesus. Oh God, everywhere the enemy has come to steal. I thank you for replacing, for renewing, for restoring. In the name of Jesus. Every place where the devil has come, God. Hallelujah. And, and broken and destroyed. We thank you right now for building up again. We thank you, Lord God, for restoring the waste places. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. 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 Hallelujah. I promise if you worship him right where you are, he'll fill that place. He'll fill that place right where you are. He'll fill that place right where you are. Turn your house into a sanctuary. Turn your kitchen into a sanctuary. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For as a believer, you're the church. You're the church. You're the church of the living God. Hallelujah. Not this building. You're the church. You're the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As we come together digitally, as we form the ecclesia, the called out ones digitally. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. By nature, by virtue of technology, we've got, you're able to see this being transmitted through airways, being transmitted through through fiber optics being transmitted but you know what Holy Spirit has been using that the, the whole time Holy Spirit has been going over the airways been, the Bible says and the Spirit of God ho hovered and moved among the face of the deep Ke technology is just, is just catching up with what the Holy Spirit has been doing the whole time you're able to stream this into your home right now 
And the Holy Spirit, at your invitation, at your, at your permission, has been able to come into your presence. Where two or three are gathered, the Bible says, he'll be there in the midst. Holy Spirit's been streaming from the very beginning. Holy Spirit's been downloading from the very beginning. Hallelujah. And we're just grateful for the opportunity. We're grateful for the privilege. We're grateful for the chance to be in the house of prayer. Father, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you for this opportunity and this privilege right now. Now, God, I ask you, God, that you would sit me down and you stand in my place. I pray now, God, that you would word my lips, you think through my mind to the degree, God, that whatever is being said, God, that your people would hear you before they hear me. I thank you now, Father God, that at the entrance of your word, light and life, become established somebody's broken today we thank you for mending we thank you for restoring somebody's heavy today we thank you for lifting the load off of them today God in the name of Jesus somebody somebody's lonely right now right where they are God I pray that you would just congregate in their midst I thank you I thank you for angels Lord God congregating and hovering around them and letting them know they're not by themselves right now. In the name of Jesus. Ah, thank you, God. Let this word bring light and life. Let our time together, Lord God, be sweet. <clears throat> Let it be complete. Let it bring clarity and restoration. <clears throat> We've been challenged for over a year. So God, I'm not necessarily asking you to challenge us with this word, but I am asking you to change us with it. Change us from the inside out. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 Right where you are, just one more time. Can you just give God the glory? Just bless him. Just bless him. Oh, uh, God. Thank you. 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 You know, I'm going to tell you, sometimes I feel foolish walking around my house just thanking God and praising him. But you know what? Fool foolishness is, is, is rushed out because as I begin to praise him in my kitchen, as I begin to praise him as I walk around my, my house, what first felt foolish is replaced with a fullness because he begins to feel me. He begins to feel me. I need you to, I need you to press past that foolish feeling right now and desire to be feel. I want God to feel me and I want him to feel my house. I want him to feel, feel where I'm dwelling right now. I want him to feel it. Fill it up. Fill it up, God. Hallelujah. 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 Don't be ashamed to own God. Hallelujah. Let him fill up your house. Let him fill it up. Hallelujah. Fill it up with worship. Fill it up with praise. Huh? Glory. Hallelujah. God, I thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Ah. There may be somebody say, well, well why, why do you do that, Pastor? Why do you do that? Don't nobody see you. You know what? That's right. Because I'm not doing it for people. This is not a performance for me. It's, it's where I get my power. Praise. The Bible says he inhabits the praises of his people. And when I praise God, it gets God's attention and he, he wants to be there where praise is. And so I encourage you, if you're by yourself and you're feeling alone, send out an invitation. <laughs> your praise, your worship invites God, invite, it, it invites God in. It says, God, come in, you're welcome. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you and God are always a majority. Hallelujah.
Let's do our Bible affirmation. Amen. I'm full. I'm full this morning. I'm full this morning. Let's do it. Let's do our Bible affirmation this morning. Uh, it should be found on your screen. We say this, and I'm going to tell you right now, I have longed for the day to get back together with the body of Christ real time and declare and decree and pronounce, hallelujah, God's word, God's, God's favor, have fellowship. I'm, I, I, I'm, 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 I'm grateful for this, but I'm not satisfied. Can I say that? I'm grateful, but I'm not satisfied. I long for the day we're able to do our Bible affirmation again together. I love the sound that it creates in the earth. Let's create that sound right now in the best way we can in this moment. Ready? Read. This is my Bible. It is the infallible, incorruptible, unstoppable, immutable word of God. It holds my peace, my victory, my breakthrough. This is my spiritual roadmap. Believe that? Give God a shout. Can I get some water, please? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're coming from Romans chapter 12, <clears throat> verse 3. Romans chapter 12, verse 3. <clears throat> and we're going to get to that. But we're starting a series today. <clears throat> And it's simply faith in dry seasons. Faith in dry seasons. Don't let anybody tell you that as a believer you won't go through dry seasons. Don't let anybody tell you or make you feel bad if at any point in your walk with God, you go through or experience a dry season. The same way we have winter, spring, summer, and fall, we have spiritual seasons. And there are times when we go through dry seasons. But you know, God's expectation for us is that even in a dry season, he still expects faith. So we're going to talk about faith in dry seasons. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Faith in dry seasons. <clears throat> now, now, when it comes to matters of faith, there are no varying shades or degrees or steps where faith is concerned. There's no there's no co commercial grade of faith. There's no professional grade of faith. Faith, uh, there, there, are no, there are no degrees or levels of faith. We, we, we hear the phrases weak faith and strong faith and bold faith. We hear big faith. We hear little faith. But these phrases don't clarify. They confuse and contradict the purpose of faith. And they distract us from what is most important about faith. Don't let anybody tell you that, that if it didn't happen, you must have little faith. Don't let, them, don't let somebody tell you that you had weak faith. There, there are no degrees. There are no shades of faith. We have to understand <clears throat> that God has given us, and that's what we're going to get to that. He says a measure, of the measure of faith. The most important thing about our faith in God's ability is acquisition, that's receiving it and applying it. That's the most important thing about faith. If there's any distinction to it, it's, 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 it's us uh, uh, acquiring it and then applying it. If there's any distinction, if there's the most important part, the most important thing about our faith in God's ability is our ability to acquire that faith and then apply that faith. Because, because all around us exists carefully crafted schemes designed to cause us to faint, give up, cave in, break down, and quit where faith is concerned. The devil's always trying to get us to, to fall out of faith. He's always trying to get us 
to give up where faith is concerned. Because I'm getting ahead of myself. The, 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 our greatest weapon against the enemy is our faith in God's ability. I got bars this morning. Our greatest weapon against the enemy is our faith in God's ability. And so he's always trying to, to create scenarios that will get us to abandon, to leave, to vacate faith. Because I don't care how, 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 how loud you say it, how loud you yell, I don't care how, how many tongues you talk, if there is no faith associated with it, if there's no faith in God's ability, you're doing nothing. We got a whole lot of religious people who are tied, who have tied themselves to the religious form, but don't have faith in the God of their salvation. And it's without faith. Without faith, the Bible says, it is impossible to please God. It's, 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 it's our faith. The just shall live by what? Faith. Faith. And the devil, the devil is doing his best. He's doing his best to get us to vacate faith. Adversity, chaos, and calamity are all agents of discouragement designed to derail, dismantle, and destroy our consistent, confident trust in God. To the point, to the point that we decommission our greatest weapon against the devil. That is, again, that is our faith in God's ability. We define faith here at the room as consistent, confident trust in God. And if the devil can disrupt your consistent, confident trust in God, then he can, he can begin the process of isolating us so that he can then violate us. If he can get us to have doubt in God's ability, then we're left to our own ability. And you and I both know we are weak as baby's breath when it comes to fighting in the spirit without God. You and I both know we couldn't fight our way out of a wet paper bag if it, it, in our own strength. But my Bible says that, that with God, all things are possible. Hallelujah. So, so, so how, does, how does, the question is, how does spiritual dryness occur? We're going to talk about that. How does spiritual dryness occur? It occurs... When we, 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 we stop trusting in God. Spiritual, we become spiritually dry when we stop trusting in God. And I can hear people say, well, well Pastor, when, my, when I went through my dry season, I didn't stop trusting in God. It's subtle. It's subtle. I say, I'm, 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 getting, I'm getting ahead of myself. But when you started relying more on, on your ability than God's ability, you stop trusting in God. You may not have abandoned him. You ever had somebody who you 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 who had done something and proven themselves to do be able to do something, and then you asked them, you depended on them to do it, and they didn't do it. You may never have verbalized it, but you slowly stepped back, and you thought twice about asking them again. When we do that with God. That, it, that, that little hesitation is enough, is enough for the devil to take and spin to get us to, to one day eventually totally abandon God. We become spiritually dry when we stop totally trusting in God. When we doubt, can he do it? Or when we say, in case he don't do it. When you got a plan B for God's, for God's plan, you've stopped trusting in God. And I hear people say, well, well, pastor, I'm just trying to be careful. Okay. All right, careful. Careful is, is the enemy of faithful. And I know I'm messing with a whole lot of a whole lot of whole lot of brainiacs, a whole lot of analytical folks. But you got you, you, it. mean, I just got to just jump in. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying. I'm not saying do what your hands can fit. 
I'm not saying do what fits your hand to do, but the, the stuff that the stuff that you that you have to speculate and the stuff you have to contract out to other people instead of giving it to God. That's what I'm talking. About. That's when that's when you're trying to be careful because you're not you because you lost the confidence in God's ability. I trust Him to make a way, but I'm gonna call this lo- I'm gonna call this loan officer just in case. Especially when it's not when he hasn't led you or directed you to do that. You did it cause cause your friend did it and they got they got a favorable result. But if God hadn't led you to do it and you're doing it because you think it's you think it's a good thing to do, you you it, the the trust the trust in God has diminished and has weakened ever so much. But it's enough to bring reasonable doubt, and that's all the devil needs. That's all he needs. Anybody, has anybody ever been in a spiritually dry place? Many of us tend to look at the externals for evidence that we've been spiritually dry. A setback, things not happening the way we had planned them to happen, things falling through. We tend to think we tend to think these are these externals are the evidence of spiritual dryness, but it's 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 fundamentally important that we understand that faith has zero to do that faith has zero to do with our feelings and emotions. Faith has zero to do with our feelings and emotions. You don't have to feel faithful to be faithful. You, you, don't, you don't have to be in a faithful mood. To be faithful. Some of my most faithful stances have been under my greatest attacks. You don't have to feel faithful to be faithful. Faith has zero to do with our feelings and our emotions. And just because we feel that something isn't working or we feel like everything is going down, we have to remember that this is not the frequency that kingdom citizens operate on. We don't operate on the frequency of feelings. Kingdom citizens, we don't, we, yes, we have feelings, but we don't operate on them on that level. Now, I want to balance that. I want to balance that right here because our feelings and our emotions are real, but kingdom citizens have the choice to either live on the level of being dominated by our feelings and emotions or coming up higher to mastery of those same feelings and emotions. They're real. What you feel is real. The emotions are real. And anybody who tells you who try to act like they don't have emotions, they are lying to themselves and to you too. But the kingdom citizen has the choice. Either I'm going to be dominated by my feelings or emotions, or I'm going to move to the next level and master through the power of the Holy Spirit these same feelings and emotions. So Paul says, he says, I buffet myself daily. I buffet myself. He says, I'm telling myself, no, no, you can't have it. No, you can't have no pity party. No, you can't have your way. No, no, you can't do that. He says, daily, da- every day, I'm, I'm attacked. I'm, I'm, I'm enticed to, to, to let my feelings drive. Every day, my feelings say, let me drive. And Paul says, daily I buffet myself. Daily I tell myself, no, you can't have it. No, you can't do it. No, you can't have your way. No, you, you, the feelings are real. Yes, I feel angry sometimes. I feel angry sometimes I want to cut. So I feel angry sometimes I want to pull up Kirk Franklin on the line. I thought about, well, you know what? Let me just record what Kirk did and when I get mad, just... But me, yes, there are times I get so angry. I want to I wanna tell you about yourself. But, I, but, but like Paul, my, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit in me said, no, you can't do that. No, you can't say that. No, no. Why? Because his desire is to advance the kingdom of God and not advance my agenda. I'd feel real good. We'd feel real good. You'd feel real good if you were able to just cuss them out. I mean, just lay them out. If you, was, if you was able to bust the windows out their car, if you was able to do what your emotions wanted you to do, you'd walk away feeling real good. But how would God be glorified? 
And how would, how would your life then be impacted? Would we have to go and visit you on Visitor's Day? Daily. Emotions are real. Feelings are real. But you have to make, as kingdom citizens, you have the choice. Am I going to be mastered by my emotions or am I going to master my emotions? And it's a process. It's a process. It's a process. And you need to learn to celebrate the process. Celebrate the victories along the process. Okay, you didn't cuss, you didn't cuss but three people out this week. Well, last week you cussed out 12. Celebrate the process. So, God, I thank you that Holy Spirit now is, 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 being more, is being more amplified in my ear now than before. Celebrate it because feelings and emotions, they are real. But you have to choose whether or not you're going to master, you're going to master them or they're going to master you. Kingdom citizens choose whether to be governed by our feelings and emotions or governed by our faith in God's ability. Now, now, please hear this. Please hear this. If you're taking notes, write this down. Fighting a spiritual dry season doesn't take place in the midst of a spiritual dry season. That's good. That's good. I'm going to say it again. Fighting a spiritual dry season doesn't take place in the midst of a spiritual dry season. I'm going to drink this for effect. You can't fight your way out of it while you're in it. The victory over a spiritual dry season comes through making regular spiritual deposits daily. Yeah, you're going to go through spiritual dry seasons. But if you have been making spiritual deposits daily, when those dry seasons come, You got some reserves. See, I'm looking for some humpback Christians. <coughs> Thank you, Holy Spirit. I'm looking, we're talking about humpback Christians. I'm looking, you know, the camel, the camel, the camel drink the water and, and fill up the humps. Because the camel knows, the camel doesn't know when I'm going to get my next drink. So he fill up them humps. Because he know he's going on a journey where typically there is no water. And he knows if I, I, if I fill up these humps, I can, I can make my way to the next destination because I, I, I got some reserve. I'm looking for some humpback Christians. I'm, look, I'm looking for some camel Christians who understand that there, there's going to come a time where I'm going to have a dry spot, a dry spell. I'm not, the, it's going to seem like my prayer's not getting through. It's going to seem like all hell is breaking loose. It's going to seem like those who said they had my back don't even know what my back is. But because I've been putting deposits in day, day after day, after I've been in the Word every day, I'm filling up my humps. Because there's going to come dry spells. There's going to come dry seasons. There's going to be times that, that your conventional way of tapping through, it's going to seem to be delayed. But if you put in the time, if you made deposits, if you made deposits day after day, when you hit that dry spell, you can keep on moving. You don't have to be stranded. You don't have to be dehyd spiritually dehydrated because I've put in some extra. I've made some deposits. I didn't, I didn't need all of it then, but I knew, I knew that there was a day coming. Ah. It's not a campaign we forge in the moment, but it's a commitment we make and we faithfully keep day after day. That's why, da that's why David said, he said, daily, Early in the morning will I seek you. That's what David said. David understood. He said, I got, I, I got to keep this line open. I got to keep this connection going because I don't know when, 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 when the moment will come when, when I won't be able to tap into it like I can today. Rapper Andy Minio said, he says, if you stay ready, we won't have to get ready. 
So here's the question. How is it, how is it that, how is it that we, we, we see the need to have financial reserves but no spiritual reserves? How is it that we can be so savvy to say, you know what, you need to have at least three months of, 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 of check so, to, so when you hit a, hit, a, hit, a, hit a bad spot, you can help yourself. How is it that we, 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 we will promote financial reserves, but we won't talk about spiritual reserves? You've got to have some spiritual deposits. Are you making Daily spiritual deposits. Are you making daily spiritual deposits? Now, now Genesis, Genesis uh, 8.22 reminds us, while the earth remains, seed time and harvest and cold and heat and summer and winter and day and night shall not cease. While the earth remains, there is seed time and harvest. Seed time and harvest. Seed Time and harvest. You can't have harvest without time after planting the seed. As, uh, as long as the earth remains, there's the time for seed, and then there's time, and then there's harvest. There is a time between the seed being planted and the harvest, and it can seem like a long time especially if we're anxious for manifestation. But the wait time is the exact time to rehearse the objective of every kingdom citizen. That wait time is the exact time to rehearse why it is God brought you into the kingdom. And that objective is a healthy relationship with Jesus Christ. So while the, from the time of planting to this harvest, that, 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 that meantime is the time that we should rehearse and recount, I am here to create re good, healthy relationship with Jesus Christ for kingdom citizens. That, that time, God is, he's really setting us up for some alone time with him. And so it's not for things and it's not for what we can get, but it's, in, it's an active, vibrant, and alive connection with Jesus Christ. Some of us grew during this pandemic spiritually. Some of us, out, some of us outgrew our, 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 our vase <laughs> or our pot because we took the time to build relationship. We took the time to dig deeper into God. And once this, is, once this is established, all the other stuff falls into place. Once I make the objective to grow relationship with God, then all the other stuff falls in place. I remember when I was courting, when I was looking for my missus, when I was looking for my, my rib. I remember I, I found this girl from Arkadelphia. And she was fine. I mean, this girl was fine. And for a moment, all I saw was us getting together. For a moment, I said, ooh, we would, we would make a good couple. Oh, she look good. I look all right. She, oh, my goodness, the girl look good. She's smart. She, oh, my goodness. So for, for the, for, for the, in the beginning, I was just focused on, on us. I was just focused on us. And when we, we were seniors in high school, we got to college, and we didn't tell each other where we were going, and we found ourselves at the same college. And then I began to really consider could I see myself spending the rest of my life with this girl? I'd always ask that question. Some of my friends would say, you're just too serious. I said, I don't, want be, I don't want to be playing with nobody else's wife, man. I don't want to be playing with nobody else that ain't, don't, don't have nothing to do with my future. So I began to seriously ask, is she, could she, is, is she keeping material? And in my 19-year-old in, in my self, I heard the Spirit of God say, how are you going to figure that out without me? So I began to develop relationship with God 
so that I could see if this relationship was worthy. I began to, and, and many of us, we go the opposite way. We want to we focus on the physical relationship and we ignore the spiritual relationship. Especially if you're considering this person to be someone you want to share the rest of your life and time with. You have to, you have to go to the one who, who designed your life and your time and, and consult him to see if this person. And so in building, in, I said that to say this, in building my relationship with her, I had to, I had to build my relationship with him. I had to know his heart to recognize if I could legitimately give my heart to her. And it's, it's important. All these other things, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things will be added unto you. All these other things will be added. In the text, in the text, and I'm just, I'm, I am told you, this is going to be a series. I can't, I can't, I can't do it all here. I'm going I'm to stop here. I got five more minutes. See what we can do in five more minutes. Now, now in, in, in this text, Romans 12, 3, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read, I'm going to first read the message version for understanding. I'm going to read the message version for understanding. And then the, the, uh, I'm reading from the King James to break down and to clarify. Here's the message version of Romans 12, 3. It says, I'm speaking to you out of deep gratitude for all that God has given me. And especially as I have responsibilities in relation to you. Living then, as every one of you does, in pure grace, it's important that you not misinterpret yourselves as people who are bringing this goodness to God. No, God brings it all to you. The only accurate way to understand ourselves is by what God is and by what he does for us. Not, not by what we are and what we do for him. <clears throat> King James said, reads it like this. For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. The measure of faith. Say the measure. He didn't say a measure. He said the measure of faith. Now, the measure of faith suggests that there is no deviation or in distribution or dissemination. The measure says there's one. The measure. That there's, a, there's, a, there's a prescribed, a known, and an acknowledged measure of faith. It suggests that there's a standard unit of faith given or assigned by God to each of us who believe. So like I said in the beginning, it, it's, con it's confusing and it's contradicting to say, oh, he had great faith, or he has, he has big faith, or she has little faith. No, you have the measure of faith. We all have the measure. God did not pull from his black label. He didn't give you platinum label and give me, give me a, a, a bronze label faith. We all have the measure. We have the measure. It's the standard unit of faith. All of us have been given it. Now, now I'm going to say this right here. I'm getting ahead of myself. Now, how you use it will determine its strength. But we all have the measure. God didn't give me more than he gave Frank. He didn't give me more than he gave Bill. He didn't give me more than he gave Bobby. He gave all of us the measure. How you use it is up to you. Say the measure. So, so whenever some, listen, listen re rebuke and deny, don't receive anybody who said, well, you got small faith. No, -uh. I got the measure. The, right, right now, right now, kingdom citizens, hear me, hear me when I say this. The, the, the king, kingdom citizens have the same measure of faith that Jesus had when he walked among men on the earth. Same measure that Jesus had on the earth you got. How you using it is the question. 
Same measure. The measure. So, so, so we're, so we're, we're going to go, go in my last two minutes, we're going to go to Matthew 14, but we need to stop by Romans 10, 17. 10, Romans 10, 17 says it like this. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith cometh by hearing. Hearing, hearing before we see is typically standard protocol for kingdom citizens. But a spiritual dry season puts tremendous pressure on that standard. When you typically, it's, 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 it should be the protocol for kingdom citizens to, to hear before they see. God wants us to walk by faith and not by sight. It's, it should be typical protocol, but dry seasons put tremendous pressure and strain on that standard. When you're in a dry season, it's hard to hear before you see. When you're in a dry season, it's hard, it's hard to, trust, to trust God when, when, whenever, when, when you got sand blowing in your ear and you're got, you got, you, 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 you blinded by, the, by, the, by, the, by the, the, the debris that's blowing from this sandstorm. Because you're in a desert. It's hard, to, it's, hard to, it's hard to hold on to that standard of hearing before I see in a dry season. But think about, think about this. Think about this. Any season, any season, any, any seed that's planted has to establish the root before you see any evidence of fruit. Let it marinate. Listen, you don't see the fruit first. You see the root. The root has to be established first. And we don't often see the root. You don't see the root before you see the fruit. The, the fruit lets you know that there's something anchored already. Now, initially, we don't see any activity taking place with the seed, but just because we don't see it doesn't mean there's nothing happening. Faith in God's ability is often just like this. The, God's gonna, he's going he's gonna to ask you to believe him, believe him for something that you don't see readily. But because you have faith in his ability, because you have faith in his ability, you say, God, I'll trust you even if I can't trace you. God, I, I, yes, yes and amen, even though I don't understand how it's going to happen, but because you said it, I have faith in your ability. I don't see it yet. I don't feel it yet. But because you said it, yes and amen, because I have faith in your ability. That seed isn't void of a stem. It isn't void of leaves. That seed isn't void of buds. It isn't void of flowers or fruit. They just haven't manifested yet. And as a matter of fact, all of those things are already present in the seed. The Bible says he's given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Everything that you need to, to be successful and prosperous in your life, he's already given it to you in seed form. Oh. And it takes faith to not dig up the seed. How many people, there have been people, it takes faith. You don't see nothing and you want to dig it up. But if you dig up, then you destroy the seed. You got to trust the process, trust and have the faith in his ability that what he said will come to pass. The same way, it's the same way with the word of God. This word is seed. You plant that seed by faith in God's ability to honor his word. These are his words. And he is he's faithful. He said he's faithful that promise. Faithful is he that has promised. And God is not a man that he should lie. Put your faith in this seed, in this bag of seed and plant it and trust in his ability to make it happen. Matthew 22 and I'm done. I'm over my time. Matthew 14, 22. It reads like this. I'm reading from the, the, the English Standard Version. Immediately, he made the disciples go into the boat and go, and go before him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but the boat by, his, by this time was a long way from the, from the land, beaten by the waves, for the wind was against them. Now, the King James says that the wind was contrary. 
that we have to resist the urge to allow the storms of life to discourage us from going to the other side. We have, to allow, we, have to, we, have to, we have to resist the urge to allow the storms of life to discourage us from going to the other side because Jesus had told them, go to the other side. What has Jesus told you to do that's now come under attack? What has Jesus told you to do? What has God told you to do that has now come under attack? You cannot allow the attacks and the storms of life to, keep, to talk you out of doing what God said you could do. Can't let it, you, you can't do it. You can't do it. Matter of fact, the attack is, is, should be confirmation. Oh, this is God. The attack should be confirmation. I'm doing the will of God. Because who would fight me like this? Who would fight me like, like this for doing, for doing a good thing? Who would fight me like this? The devil would. Jesus will never fail us when it comes to delivering us out of the storms of life. He may not come when you want him, but he's right on time. Verse 25 and 27, and I'm done. He said, and in the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, it is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them saying, take heart, it is I do not be afraid. Verse 26 says, they cried out in fear. Now, in the day of calamity, the wrong response is fear. The wrong response is fear. And we've got to train ourselves, buffet ourselves. No, you're not going to be afraid. You're not going to be afraid. You're not going to be afraid. You're not, no, 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 I, you can't, no, 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 uh-uh. The, the wrong response in the day of calamity is fear. That's why Jesus came. And the first thing he spoke to was their fear. He said, don't be afraid. Your fear is going is to sabotage and contaminate the promise. Don't be afraid. They called, they, they called me, I, I, I thought about, I said, I said Lord, the, 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 the last May, I mean, the, the, the storm, <sighs> we were in a storm during the, the housing crisis years ago, years ago. We got it in a predatory loan. And they called me on a Thursday and said my house was going to auction on Monday. And I was going out of town. My mom was coming, my mom and dad was coming to watch the babies, the kids when they were babies. And immediately the devil said, what you going to do? Immediately the devil started messing with me and showing me flashing scenes of my mom and my kids and all my stuff on the curb. Immediately. I could have responded, but, but I'm, I'm, I'm here to tell you, there was no fear in me. Now, now, not because I'm so deep and so spiritual, but because I chose to activate and apply my measure of faith to the situation. I want to tell you, I, it, it wasn't because I was super deep. It wasn't because I was super spiritual. It wasn't because I had pastor in front of my name, but I understood I got a measure of faith, and I, and I activated my, some of y'all, some, some of your measure is on your mantle. Take your, me, take your measure off the mantle and begin to apply it. I took my measure off the, off the mantle and I began to apply it. And, 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 and the fear, it, it, my faith, my faith drove out the fear that was creeping in. I, 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 I want to tell you, I want to tell you that, 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 that I walked with my chest out and and, and, and everywhere I, I stepped, the, mount, the, the, the ground trembled because I was this faith giant. No, 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 no. I just used my measure. I just used my measure. I applied my measure. Now, was I tempted with fear? Yes. Did, did I have moments where I wanted to shrink back to fear? Yes. I look at my, at my wife, I look at my children, and I say, what, what, what you going to do? Well, you, you know, Monday, Monday, they're going to put your stuff out. They're going to they gonna have an auction. But I didn't, I wasn't afraid, Aaron. Because I said, I said, God, you gave us this house. And if we can't stay here, you got someplace better. 
That's where I chose to put my focus. I didn't, I, I didn't choose to focus on the, the fearful part. I said, God, you the, you, you the one who gave us this house in the first place. And if this ain't the place we're supposed to stay, then you got another place just as good, if not better, for us there. Ask me where I'm staying. In the same house. All them years ago. Because, because you, you, we can't allow, the wrong response is fear. Now, I'm not, I'm not trying to condemn you. If fear, if you've ever encountered fear, in, you, if, if it's there, it's real, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not condemning you, but I'm saying don't stay there. Don't stay there. Faith in God's ability is our positive response to what, listen, to, oh, let me say, I got to say this quiet, I got to say this slowly because you don't, you don't want to miss this. Faith. In God's ability is our positive response to what grace has already made available. I'll say it again. Faith in God's ability is our response to what grace has already made available. As Ante as plays my Academy Award music. So when Jesus said they were going over to the other side to receive that promise, the disciples had to respond like it was a done deal. No matter what they saw along the way. To receive that promise. That's why Jesus immediately spoke to. He didn't, he didn't immediately. Oh thank you Holy Ghost. He didn't immediately speak to the wind. He spoke to their fear. You would have thought. If my boys are fearful for this storm. Let me speak to the storm. He spoke to the fear. Oh that's good. That's good. Because Jesus understood your contaminated faith, and that's all fear is. Because I'm fa I have faith in the bad stuff happening. That's what fear is. Your contaminated faith will, contam will further contaminate the promise. So he says, I can't let y'all poison this promise. Fear not. And I'm telling you right now, I can't let you poison the promise that God has for, for you. Fear not. They say in another strain of COVID, more contagious than the first one is coming. Fear not. Don't let your fear, don't let your contaminated faith poison the promise. Jesus has told you some stuff that as you look at it right now, it don't look like it's going to happen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. God has told me about this ministry, that there, there is a space for us that we're going to own. And right now, it don't look like none of that's going to happen. Fear not! I told you what we're going to do. That's what he said. He said Listen. Can I, can I say it like I felt? I felt Jesus was like gangs. Brace yourself, fool. Get yourself together. Didn't I tell you we're going to the other side? Don't let what you see in the meantime. Cancel out your harvest. Have I not said it? Will I not perform it? To see what he said, to see what he said, I have to operate in faith, in his ability. I don't have faith in faith. That's hollow. There are people tell you, I got faith. I ask him, in, in what? I have faith in his ability. 
to accomplish everything he has said. I have faith in his ability. God has shown me the day when this house will be filled again with worshiping, God-loving people. It ain't one mask in this building. He's shown me that. He's shown me that. He's shown me, once again, true fellowship. Where we're hugging one another and not fearful of, of the invisible. I'm holding on to that. Because everything he says is a promise. How do we have faith in dry seasons? We don't respond to calamity and chaos with fear. You got to say to yourself, when the calamity comes, when the negative comes, when the opposite of what he said comes, can you tell you how many times I said, but that ain't what he showed me. That ain't what he showed me. I see this, but that ain't what he showed me. I hear this, but that ain't what he told me. I feel this, but that's not what he said about me. Hold on to faith in his ability. You may be here watching, and there's some things that God has said and spoken over your life. And right now, it don't look like it's happening. Right now, it looks like God made a mistake. It looks like God must have been talking to somebody else. I'm here to tell you, fear not! The same way he told those disciples, we're going to the other side. You're in the middle of a storm right now to try to, to try to discourage you from what he said. Hold on to faith in his ability. He says, have I not said it? Will I not perform it? This storm, that storm, has been, it is intended for one thing alone it is it is trying it is a a a a promise thief trying to steal the promise of god from you fear not if you have to say over and over again to yourself that's not what he showed me that's not what he showed me it's not what he showed me. Hold on to every promise that God has given you. What he spoke over your family, what he spoke over your finances, what he spoke over your health, what he spoke over your relationship, hold on to God's promises. For all his promises are in him, and in him they are yes and amen. Amen means it is so. It means it is so. Some of you are believing God to save your unsaved family. Hold on to faith. Keep speaking life. Keep, keep thanking God. You've made the petition. Now thank God that they're saved. And even begin to call them man of God, woman of God. Hold on to faith. Because faith is your strongest weapon against the enemy. If you're here today, you're not saved. You, you don't know who God is. You not receive Christ as your Lord and your Savior. Today's a good day to get saved. Saved from what? Saved from hell. Hell is real. Don't nobody talk about it much, but it's real. You think you're going through hell here on earth? You ain't going through nothing. The Bible says there's weeping and gnashing of teeth over and over and over for eternity. Hell is real, but it's not intended for you. Hell was created for Satan and those fallen angels, those angels that believed him, who believed that he could take God. 
That's who hell is created for, which means you don't have to go. Listen to the net message that's going to come later. He's, uh, Minister Chris is going to give you an invitation. If you want to be saved, respond to that invitation. Accept Christ into your heart. And if you got saved, drop us a line. Let us know. Type in the comments, I got saved today. Go to our website, uh, www.urcc.org. Let us know you got saved. God loves you, and so do we. We'll see you next week. God bless you. opportunity to present to you today the too good to be true news of Jesus Christ. You know, the misconception about going to heaven is that a lot of people think that if I'm just a good person, then I get to go to heaven. But that's not true at all. The Bible teaches us that the wages of sin is death. And the only person who can counteract that wage is the blood of Jesus Christ. So if this is you, if you have not received Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I want to give you this opportunity to receive him right here, right now. If this is you, repeat after me. Say, Father, I confess I'm a sinner and my sins deserve death. But I believe Jesus, the Son of God, died for my sins. He rose three days later. I confess with my mouth, I believe in my heart. Thank you, God, for saving me. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, we believe you've been born again. If this is you, reach out to us, comment below. We want to talk with you and help you in these first initial steps of a brand new life in Christ. God bless you.